song, four original songs. So maybe like one or two more. We could throw a cover in there. Mm. It's, it's not that difficult to license yeah. that kind of stuff. Nice. Maybe. Yeah. Cool. Is there a theme to it? No. Nah. Like, oh, okay. No, I just, just four completely unrelated songs. <laughs> four all, yeah, all different, different styles of music. It's a cool night. Nice. Yeah, yeah, awesome. <laughs> all right. We are back with another episode of Sessions with Mary Jane. I am your host, Jordan Freed. And I'm your host, Brendan O'Brien. And I'm the other host, Rena Ezra. And we are back with a very wonderful guest. Uh, personally, one of my favorite musicians in the Hudson Valley northeast area uh he is the frontman and founder of fat boy brass band uh jordan ranchiera yeah oh, yeah two jordans Thanks, man. yeah yeah jordan we, overload might be too much we just, so this is actually our, our 100th episode and we were like we Yay! had the jordan and jordan episode be our 100th episode so we're very happy to have you here down in New Jersey and on the podcast, dude. How are we going to distinguish between somebody talking to me and somebody talking to Jordan? We'll Freed. just never talk to Jordan Freed. Yeah. yeah. And we'll just talk to you. <laughs> yeah. Or. I'm the only Jordan. We're all Jordan on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> no names exist for Jordan today. <laughs> we'll talk like that. I can't, yeah. I can't do the voice. I tried. That was that. It was good. It was, good. It was a good try. So. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, yeah, so. Well, I think Jordan R and Jordan F. Yeah. Right? Sorry, I still think I was. Sorry, I was still like, we need an answer to this. Yeah. Do you have to figure yeah. it out? This is actually a question for both Jordans. Did you guys have other Jordans that you went to school with? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wait, so is this high school? High or college? When did you guys meet? I don't know when you met. We met. Oh, we met later in life. Yeah, like a few. We can talk about that after we answer the Jordan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I thought oh, so that separately. That was, oh, I thought you meant together. No, no. So then I thought, in your individual well, Jordan universes, have did you have other Jordans? Did I clarify? School, right? yeah. People listening would be confused. Yeah. No, I had a very good friend named Jordan in high school. So. Yeah, most of the time people wanted to talk to him. Mm. So that's basically how I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had uh, I had three Jordans that I went to, to school with. Wow. Wow. There was a girl Jordan, mm -hmm. right? And uh, and she never talked to me. You know, mm -hmm. she we were in separate separate circles. And then there was Jordan Dubs, mm -hmm. who who was a friend of mine in elementary school, and then we kind of drifted apart. And then there was a uh, oh no, never mind. There was a kid whose last name was Jordan. Uh, I can't yeah. I guess it. Yeah. Yeah, and he was like he was like an anime kid. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. 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 And how Jordan and I met, uh, to my understanding and my memory, is I was doing the uh, open mic at Olives, and Jordan was oh. also doing the open mic at Olives yeah. in a group of uh, what I like to call people of Nyack in, in air <laughs> quotes. Because like when you just hang out at Nyack, there's just people who you just run into a lot. I guess people who are in the music scene, people who are young college age ish people who are like I'm going to the bars here mm -hmm. um, but is that when we met yeah I think that is when we met yeah. okay yeah. what were your each, each like first impressions I was like man this guy really smokes a lot of weed huh <laughs> <laughs> Wow, and I don't, I don't know if I was smoking my max amount of weed at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I was smoking too much. I was definitely going through some weird, weird times in the olives days for sure. Uh, there were definitely many different olives eras for me. Um, and Mr. Yeah. Freed, what was your impression of? Uh, he seemed cool, and the, like your whole crew, like you were hanging out with Linda Garcia as well, who is also a friend of the show. I don't know if we've had her on. We, uh, yeah, I think we, we did have her yeah. on, uh, but she's been in like L and H. Uh, short films and stuff, but uh, you guys were both hilarious, and it was just a very good time. And I remember, like, you guys brought a lot of energy. Like, there was a group of you guys, and there were other people outside of the people performing, mm -hmm. which made it exciting to actually do stand-up because you were like, oh, there are people here and there are the the youths of the uh, the county and the area. Yeah. yeah. Damn, dude, that was a lot more thoughtful than what I said about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we did the guest on the show. I gotta, I gotta give you some uh, momentum, you know? Uh, so where where did you grow up? You grew up in Rockland? Yeah, I grew up in Rockland in, in Orangeburg. Mm. I lived in the, in the same house my entire life. Mm. And then, uh, yeah, went to college for a few years in Boston, and uh, oh. now, now I'm still living in that same house. How was your Oxford. experience in Boston? 
It was it was okay, you know. I I, I went to college for music. That was fun. What school and, did uh, you go to? Uh, Berkeley College of Music. Oh, right. So it was it was nice being surrounded by uh, music literally constantly. Uh, but I don't know. I had a I had an odd odd like social life there. Mm. You know, it was it was very cliquish, and I mm. and I feel like I never really found my click. Oh. Uh, and I was happy to come back home and 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 kind of reunite with. With old friends. Yeah. It was clickish like in your school or like in the city itself it was in, clickish. At, at my school. Yeah. 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 And and I and I never lived in a dorm, mm-hmm. which kinda which kinda made it hard to meet people. Mm-hmm. So I had like very sporadic uh friend groups and a and a lot a lot of very lonely nights, mm-hmm. you know, just just to myself. <laughs> yeah. How was the music education there though? It was good. It yeah. Was it was very, very solid, yeah. Yeah. Where were you living? Uh I I lived in an apartment um in, in Fenway. Um, with uh, with other Berkeley students, but you know they were older than me, and and uh, yeah, it was it was just, it was just hard to meet people that that were in, in my class. You know, I'm yeah. also I'm also socially awkward in in in, in some situations. So, really? Yeah, I know. I I don't seem like it at all. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, because we know you. But um, I mean, I don't, and you are performing when you you are performing with the band so it is a different right mm-hmm. you can't be socially awkward in those <laughs> I mean I guess you can but it, um, yeah I don't know I just never uh, pick that up yeah usually happens when I get like really high mm-hmm. and I, right. I smoke too much weed cool cool and, cool and I was doing a lot of that in, in college well then that's natural yeah. yeah right then you're very just self-conscious or mm. very paranoid and really anxious yeah. of being like oh, oh, are these people thinking what I'm thinking yeah. and they are just talking about me or is it, oh then my, my hand looks like this what I don't know that's what I'm <laughs> <laughs> random thoughts yeah the stuff that rolls through your head when you're high yeah, yeah. but, but you, you do seem very comfortable you're, when you're on stage especially because like as a, like, the front man of the band essentially you are doing a lot of the mic work and crowd work with like the audience so like, do you feel more comfortable like when you are they're playing music or like in a performance setting um i feel like uh i feel like i'm kind of just bad at you know demanding attention you mm-hmm. know and and keeping keeping conversations going if i can just like let my thoughts out in, in on stage to a to a crowd of people then mm-hmm. I, I i don't know something about that is is a little bit more comforting than uh looking one person in the eye with with other people around me and mm-hmm. and uh you know just saying what's on my mind Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Understand. Yeah. So, so when did like music enter your life then? When or when did you enter music's life? Or um, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I, I, like that. I like that. I mean, I I started playing the trumpet when I was eight. I, I think uh. in, in, in fourth grade. Yeah, and, and uh, just in in my elementary school band. You know, was it by choice or did like did like someone like push you to? Uh, uh, no, I I really wanted to do it. Yeah, I. I Why the trumpet? Um, in kindergarten, there was a a classmate of mine, her parents, I don't know, came in and gave a concert and her dad played the trumpet and, and for some reason I was, I was very drawn to that. Oh, how cool. I don't even know why, but but I I just really wanted to do it. Do you remember what song he played or what what kind of music he was playing? No, no, I just, yeah, the the mom was playing like violin and and the dad was playing, I think it might've been like Christmas, Christmas concert or something like that. Yeah, but. Does music run in the family? Mm. Now my my parents uh, don't play any instruments as far as I know. My my brother, my oldest brother. Um, as far as you know, honey, we have adults. Secret musicians in the family. I'm actually a flutist. I've played for so long. Your father's upstairs too. You're playing the trumpet. <laughs> we all we all use our breath. <laughs> Sorry. You didn't see this harp. <laughs> <laughs> but as of the knowledge, like the, the confirmed facts, you are the only musician in the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, okay, so the, the trumpet, since you were eight, yeah. Um, obviously all throughout middle school, high school, college, went to school, you know, obviously for music. Um how did you meet the members of Fat Boy Brass? Was it through like when you're putting people together? Was it people you knew beforehand, or did because I don't know the connection at all? Mm. Um, well, uh, I I kind of know everybody in a different way. Linda, for example, I've known her since like middle school. You know, she, oh we really? Friends, yeah, we were friends for a while, and uh, <laughs> and uh, but I, I didn't really know that that she. Uh, you know, was was kind of like aspiring to be a, a professional musician mm-hmm. until after we we kind of like reunited after college. You know, we didn't really talk to each other much in, in, in like in college, and uh, 
what else? Uh, other other guys, I met them on Facebook, you know, just looking in like musician uh, networking groups on Facebook and uh, yeah, just playing playing shows in Nyack in the mm-hmm. Hudson Valley. You know, like Jordan said, there's that community of people that you just see around there and, and eventually, you know, you, you pick somebody up and, and try to create with them or, you know, you, you become their roommate mm-hmm. or... Uh, or you get them to mm-hmm. invest in your rental property and, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't really work out <laughs> and you owe them a lot of money and, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. and then you go to sleep you wake up and do it all over again <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, so what, like, when did you decide that you wanted to form a band or what, what made you decide that you wanted to form a band um, I, I just I don't know I, I had all these like brass band arrangements and uh, after college, you know, I was just looking for gigs and uh, I just, I figured I could do this, you know, if, mm-hmm. if I get enough people together and I, I guess I was just kind of lucky enough to find people who were committed to doing it and who wouldn't, you know, ask me, if, you know, for success up front, you know, ask me to mm-hmm. pay them for every rehearsal and pay mm-hmm. them for every gig up front. And mm-hmm. then we eventually got to the level where I, I can, you know, pay them for every gig. And that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel pretty fortunate. Yeah, this far. Yeah. Nice. What What's the most important quality in a good bandmate? Ooh. Mm, best quality. Uh, I guess patience. Mm. You know, being easygoing. Mm. Right. If uh, If I'm, you know, if the gig doesn't go too well, doesn't pay too well. You know, you can kind of just be like, all right, the next one's going to be better. Mm. You know, someone who who isn't like. Uh, it doesn't have a, a whole lot of expectations. Mm-hmm. Was it, did you go through a period of trial and error or experiment with people, like having people in the band and then you're like, ah, the chemistry's not that good or like, ah, we're not really, I don't know, picking up on each other's vibes, playing the song or oh, like, you know, or yeah, holding auditions or it's just stragglers. Like you were just, I accept anyone. Well, I kind of, uh, you know, picked most of the starting members because I've played with them before and a few that I've found on Facebook yeah. and uh, luckily luckily our, our most you know I, I'll say our most important core player our tuba player has been in there from since the start he's great yeah. I love him yeah. he's, yeah. What's the name? he's awesome <laughs> what's his name uh, TJ okay yeah TJ. he's great yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that that was lucky, and he also I, looks just like a tuba player. <laughs> <laughs> he has a build. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah you have to. Great. Yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to play tuba. Are you kidding me? You can't. No way. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. But uh, what were we saying? Uh, cor- <laughs> sorry, I got a core players. Uh, tuba. Yeah, he's one of your core oh, players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, there wasn't. I don't know. There wasn't really too much trial and error. Like I would that bring somebody on okay. and like kick him out. Most of the people that started and aren't in the band anymore really like you know they went off to college or uh, they just uh, some you know some guys just didn't feel like playing anymore. Mm-hmm. So they kind of you know faded into the background and yeah. Mm-hmm. What is one of the most interesting spaces you've performed in. Oh man! Places or venues, however you. NJ Weedman's joint. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a great venue. Yeah. yeah. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Too. Well. Okay. How was your show <laughs> there? It was, it was well attended. It it was. Uh, or was it just weird? Wow. I mean, weird. I mean, there there was one guy there who, uh, you know, I. I really appreciated his attendance. It, it was you. It was you, George. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I, I wouldn't say it was well attended, but I mean, they like paid us well and they gave us all this free weed. Mm-hmm. and They live stream it. Yeah. Though, yeah. Right? I'm yeah. sure they recorded it. Yeah. And then a bunch of people see that afterward. Mm-hmm. We, we found with, yeah. So we always tell people also not to be discouraged for any time you're doing it live because it's just like, yeah, people will watch you. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. are going to watch you virtually. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but it was it was just like a, a fun space and, and like the people yeah. that kind of stuck around to the end were, were very appreciative of it and they, they, you know, they complimented us, shook our hands and even, you know, while we were performing, it was kind of like we were looking at the crowd and they were all obviously really high. So, <laughs> so they had, you were just like blowing our minds. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, but but their like faces were just like expressionless, so you couldn't really tell if 
if you know you were blowing their minds right. or not <laughs> yeah yeah like, so like, one of the things about your band in particular is that like you guys like are like, you're incredibly entertaining especially like you like create this like party atmosphere because like the music oh, yeah. is like fun enough deep, but also you like do certain things like you do like certain choreographies or certain like bits where you like walk through the crowd so mm-hmm. how did that like, like part of the personality personality of the band develop uh, just from just from studying other other brass bands, you know, mm. studying studying the guys that are doing it in New Orleans, you know, you'll 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 see that a lot of people people walking through the crowds, people singing, dancing, you know, and uh, doing doing crazy stuff to kind of collect money with with baskets mm. and hats mm. and stuff like that. So yeah, just just studying up on on the people who are doing it and who are successful. Mm. Yeah. Who are some of the people who really inspired the uh, the starting of the band? Like who are some of the acts? Uh, definitely, uh, the, the Rebirth Brass Band, that's, oh, yeah. that was, like, my, my main inspiration, and, and kind of, uh, my start into this kind of music is, is listening to their recordings, um, you know, Preservation Hall Jazz Band is all one that's kind of fallen to the mainstream recently, mm-hmm. they, they play with, uh, who's that guy? Josh Groban. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Josh Groban. Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard the name. Yes. <laughs> we, we do sweetie yes. talk. <laughs> uh. And yeah, any 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 guys that have, that have really been doing it for uh, you know since before the the turn of the the millennium. You know, mm-hmm. this is like the nine the eighties and nineties. I won't name them all because. Because that, you know, it's a lot. I can't. I probably can't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, if you want to, you can. If you want to do that, you can just listen more. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wow. Well, what about? I'm collecting my thoughts. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what What about? Um, like going on tour or traveling like places that you want to go to or have been to because i know i mean we went we saw you in pearl river we saw you in um <laughs> where was that place where it was just a parking lot that was by awesome. a boat like and with Ashley, Ashley. <laughs> yeah okay i can remember the name of the uh the town um that was super fun yeah. also when you're saying choreography i love seeing every time when you guys um the, you make your music very very quiet and then you're shrinking to the floor yeah. <laughs> when i first saw that i that got me so excited um that's such a fun day it was, it was, it was like a, a parking lot and like a nice day with like a nice view and a ben and jerry shot and like great brass music it was just like yeah, yeah. Like every sensation every sense so you cool. need yeah <laughs> um but besides yeah because we know throughout new york new jersey um but where else like have you guys gotten on tour piled into a van and you just where you go? Um, for as far as Fat Boys Brass Band goes, the furthest we've gone was uh, to Boston. We played at a brewery there. They had like a, a, a brass night, you know, every other Saturday of the month. Mm. And then uh, other than that, you know, just New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Mm. It's as far as you gone. individually have you gone? Yeah, anywhere? yeah, yeah. When I was in college, I went on tour with a, a friend of mine who was trying to promote his. His music, a lot of a lot of uh, his work was just like solo acoustic guitar. But then he put together this band, and uh, he he took us from like I don't know the the east coast of Canada. Like he he was from Montreal, and he took us there like across Canada, and then we would go like kind of weave in and out of the U.S. So Whoa. yeah, we we hit that's I don't dope. Know, the, I think the majority of uh, of states. Wow! Yeah, wow! Like, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. Yeah, what was that like? Out. It was kind of grueling, honestly. I was going to say exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have time to stop at Dumb. a lot of the places and hang? Or was it like very quick turnaround? Well, when when we were on like the East Coast, everything is very close together. So East Coast shows were just like, you know, one day after the other after the other. Mm-hmm. And then as we kind of got to the Midwest, you know, we would have like a day in between. But it would be a day of see nothing in like you know it's like serial alberta canada it's some random town where, yeah. you know pe- people would ask us what what we were doing there and uh but uh then then, then, there, were, <laughs> then there were there was there was like there were some stops like some parts of the tour towards the end where we would have just like 15 hour drives and then like a week off and and uh we were living out of a van and you know it was that was probably the most grueling part was living out of the van mm-hmm. with like with four other people. Yeah. yeah, and your instruments. Yeah. Right? It's stuffing everybody in there. Probably not great smells. No, no, not at all. <laughs> 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 okay, it sounded like a mom. Did you pack your deodorant? Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, 
Um, <laughs> Very just insightful going... commentary. <laughs> Very boring, though, too. <laughs> the, that's the first thing I think of because I definitely, you know, smell as they, <laughs> Brendan and Jordan F. No. I actually um, don't know, but. <laughs> well, Jordan can, F. Brendan, <laughs> Brendan doesn't have an actual, like, he can't smell. Yeah. Um, but I think you guys, you guys know I have a very strong sense of smell. Right, so that right. would be like what like the first things I would pick up on if right. I was, you know, jammed anywhere with anybody. Um anyway. <laughs> to smell the side. <laughs> wait, wait, you you really can't smell? Can't. Not really. I like everyone like there's like certain smells I can smell. Like strangely like, marijuana is definitely one of these where I can like I, I can smell nothing. Also now like I'll smell that and like it'll be like a cartoon where I like, see the scent. Um but like it's most like things yeah, I can't drink. smell. Them, yeah. You're only trained to smoke out. Yeah, to smell out weed. I'm just a drug sniffing dog. I think that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have dog My energy? My agenda is just different than We talked about dog. that. Dog yeah. energy for were, sure. Were you born that way or were you in a horrible accident? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I, I always, well, maybe yeah, an accident with allergies maybe because I was like always like very stuffy growing up. But like I could smell when I was younger and then like the like stuffiness like stopped being just like seasonal to like just being all the time. Mm-hmm. And then at a certain point I was like, Right, like, I remember one day I was like, I don't think I can smell anything. And like, yeah, I can smell it. It's like, if it's really strong, I can, or if it's like up close to me, I can, but like, yeah, most things, yeah, just, wow. yeah, so that's my, my, uh, my super villain origin story. <laughs> <laughs> I will take off the nose of everybody who can smell. Um, yeah, yeah no, we had to dive into that, yeah. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah. We're used to it, but of course, yeah, please ask any questions. Yeah, about yeah, that. yeah. Any more nasal questions, I got you, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> just gonna ask, um, on a tangent, um, of TV shows or movies when you're watching, are you somebody who does really analyze the score or the music or the soundtrack or whatever it is you're watching and you're like, oh. Honestly, not too much. I don't know. If All right, next question. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, is, there, is there a show or a movie? Um, let's go TV show. Like one of like the top soundtracks for you or theme song. What do they call it? Theme theme song. Song. Yeah, right. <laughs> Those are two different things. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> thanks. Uh, theme song is what I meant. I kept saying soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> top top theme song. Or a few of them. That's hard. You know, I don't like ever answering a question when it's like, oh, your favorite or your top number one. So honestly, it's funny that you asked because the other day I was watching The Nanny. Like the brain drain. <laughs> um, and I was like, I could not get the theme song out of my head. It's like so, so catchy. Yeah. Wow, like, wow, yeah. all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's and and any anything that has that kind of theme to the show with like a uh, old timey like big band jazz. I don't, I don't I'm I'm very drawn to that. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Like cool. Uh, Boardwalk Empire too. Oh, yeah. you no, know, the show I have not seen. My mom's really into it. I gotta watch it. Mm. Yeah, I gotta yeah. watch it. Yeah. When you listen to music like that, do you listen for the trumpet or do you find yourself drawn to other instruments first? Um, yeah, no, I'm probably listening to the trumpet. Yeah. And yeah, that's just where my ear goes. Yeah. So what, what what's the difference between a good trumpet player and a great trumpet player? A uh, good trumpet player and a great trumpet player. Wow. Let's see. Um... And what do you classify yourself? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the best trumpet player of all time. King of trumpets. I'm not good or great. I'm excellent. <laughs> um, man, I guess uh, uh, a good trumpet player, right, know, knows how to do everything, right? You can play all the high notes. You can play all the different styles of music. Right, but a but a great trumpet player is is that and and a great musician. You know, mm. they can kind of adapt to to anything that's going on. Can kind of uh, learn learn new styles. You know, just and, and pick up on stuff immediately. And uh, yeah, it's that's... wild how much you can do with the trumpet. Because mm-hmm. at first glance, you're like, oh yeah, it doesn't really have a lot of buttons to press. <laughs> <laughs> not called that, but. <laughs> somebody yeah who's not me who's not in the music world at all mm. and has no talent <laughs> in that regard whatsoever um it's fascinating i'm just like yeah what you? and also it's you it's your mouth mm-hmm. you are so much of the instrument it can't work itself you yeah. have to do like 
what? Like I, my sister. It's your wind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it blows my mind sometimes because my yeah my sister used to play flute and it doesn't doesn't matter how many times I tried blowing on it I couldn't. I was like, what? Mm. What do you do? She had, like, no, purse your lips this way. And I'm like, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't work. What do you mean? Like, yeah. like, you know, sometimes you just feel like you don't have the right lips. Yeah. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, but like, uh, how? I don't understand. Like, I'm trying to figure out, I mean, this is probably so hard for you to answer because you can't, like, to simplify it for somebody who doesn't know music, like, as far as um let me just switch a little as far as when specifically jazz when you're playing with people and you're just jamming or improvising whatever segment it is what is the communication with you guys what is because you're not talking to each other Mm -hmm. you're literally doing it through sound what is that a really hard question to to answer on uh, Apple? like i just feel like yeah i i'm just trying to grasp um (laughs) So you're so you're trying to you're trying to say you're you're trying to ask yeah, how <laughs> how people play with each other without talking? Mm, yes. Yes. Well, now it sounds stupid when you say no, it like no. that. No, it doesn't sound ridiculous. Um, say it with British accent. It'll sound less stupid. <laughs> yes, I mean, yes, I mean, in terms of like um, the the language of music, like yes, like how do you know one person is when they're escalating to this part, and you're gonna start doing this, and you just know it matches, or you like obviously you have to know music, but um, yeah, anytime I see jazz where it's just like, oh my god, you just and it, it gets me when you see their face and then I'm like oh something happened like I, you know I'm not I don't really catch it sometimes when it's um but they have like their flair their personality they put some sort of pizzazz or something with it and they take someone by surprise and um like you said like a great musician is just able to adapt but I'm like yes how do you obviously you guys practice and rehearse but if somebody does something on the fly like how do you, yeah how do you know who does what um well, how do you know it's gonna sound good well in 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 the case of jazz you know if, if you're playing with somebody for the first time or like you know you're playing a group that doesn't that hasn't rehearsed mm-hmm. you usually go for like a standard song and uh, most people will know these standard songs so oh, that that's okay. kind of how you how you know you know what the chords are going to be and uh and you know each instrument has their thing that they do. The bass obviously does their specific uh-huh. rhythm, and and they play you know they have to play the specific notes and the chords, and uh, and then uh, yeah, if if somebody goes around and, and does something crazy, it's just you, you just use your ear. You know you're, mm-hmm. you 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 play for long enough, and and you listen to other artists, and you listen to their recordings, and you kind of know what to expect. You know if if somebody just starts playing the same thing over and over like like in my band if we're playing a song and somebody just like plays the same line over and over again people will try to you know play something on top of it a harmony mm. or they'll do a call and response or they'll just play the whole thing at the same time and then the drummer starts playing the rhythm of that thing at the same it's time like and, yeah yeah ah. exactly exactly mm. so there's there and there's always like room for error you know there in in, in those kinds of moments people will mess up but but somebody who's not playing at that moment probably won't won't realize it's a mistake, mm. you know. So so there's yeah there's a lot of room for error there too. Uh, so is it a lot of the time if you catch an error, is it usually just the band catches it and the crowd doesn't really catch it? Yeah, yeah, most okay. most of the yeah. time. We're all like, oh, it's all great. And you're just like, fuck, dude. Fucked up that piece. But no, there's no one named Daniel. Uh, right? No one named Daniel. Not okay, yet. good. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I just, Daniel. Just be weary. <laughs> I just said their name out there, so I wasn't like targeting it. Shout out to Daniel. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> TJ, what'd you do? Yeah. Oh, God, no. You're supposed to do this. Um, oh, here's a question. How do you direct the others if you just play trumpet? How can you speak the tuba? <laughs> if you just... <laughs> Do you comprehend the percussion? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yes, I know, because they're all bit like... But I'm just saying, yeah, how do you... Um, if you go to someone... What, I'm just thinking of, like, you know, Dave Grohl and Food... But if you're, like, drummers talk to drummers, and you're like, oh, yeah, can you do, like, ba 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 do do whatever, and it's just like, you know, 
that's um it doesn't make sense sometimes but yeah if you're explaining to somebody you know tj who's doing tuber or whatever you're like oh yeah then can you go like bong, bong, bong. like do you do that <laughs> uh, i mean no i there's there's like parts written out for everything so i know but when you guys are writing your own music like that when you're i mean you're just doing your own or you're writing other people's part like also how does that come together when you're writing new music no I'll, yeah I'll, I'll write out everybody's part oh and, and, i see yeah. okay yeah young mozart over here mm. <laughs> i mean we've heard your original some of your original songs yeah. they're great which honestly i wasn't you know i'm not i do not have a wealth of knowledge in jazz so i just felt when you guys were playing original songs i was like oh my god i was just like which famous song is this and I was like, yeah. just like yeah that's an original and i was like oh wow and yeah i did like it just sounded so good and then actually there was one time you're gonna have to remind me uh jordan f <laughs> jordan f you're gonna have to remind me which song it is but you were playing a song on spotify and i literally said and apparently it's a famous jazz song and i literally said i'm like oh that's fat boy Brock's song yeah. <laughs> i forgot which one it was it was very famous one, but whatever yeah i don't even know what it was called or the name but yeah that is um nice thank you yeah. You're welcome. Wow. That's so nice. You guys are all so nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really all right, here's the so... shit talking yeah. segment. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, uh, where's the pin? This this band has obviously uh, like a very specific genre. It's kind of specialized to even a region of the world. What is like a genre? Is there a genre that you desire to play, or is this mm. really all you want to play? And like you're totally musically fulfilled with this band, or are you like? I kind of wish I was doing hip hop stuff. I was kind of doing country stuff. Mm. Like what? Um, I mean, I I like playing this uh, New Orleans brass band stuff. I'll uh, I don't know. I'll I'll, I'll play anything if it, if it pays, you know. Mm. And uh, actually, more recently, I I've picked up playing the mandolin, and I've been playing cool. a, a lot of bluegrass music. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of been a huh. a second. You know, a second thing for me. Yeah. So that's nice. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Is there a genre of music that you like, or like a band that you like that that people would be surprised that you like? Ooh, that's a good question. I can't remember. Man, shit. Um, yeah. I want to say like guilty pleasure, but it's like I feel like guilty pleasure. Yeah, you know, I'm really guilty about it. It's just that like people. Are like, yeah, I don't oh. view guilty pleasures as guilty. Pleasures. Yeah, I view them as pleasures. Yeah, just, just pleasures. Guilty about it. Yeah. yeah. Unless like it's murder. Like, you should be, feel guilty about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just think like, pleasure is murder. Oh, God. Just so quirky and weird, I know. <laughs> He's like, oh, yeah, mm, okay, yeah, we're going to murder. murder. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so. Back to you, Jordan. Oh, well, yeah, they gave you some time to think of an answer. Oh, man. Well, I, 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 don't, I can't really name a specific band, but, uh, right, there, there's this recording of of Raymond, Raven Simone singing uh, the song "Grazing in the Grass" that mm. I, I I throw on every once in a while and it, it like gives me that that rush you know Whoa. like, like the, the goosebumps kind of rush mm. and oh. it's so cheesy and and overdone yeah. it's and it's like very very like early two thousands yeah and, uh, yeah. That's my guilty pleasure, guys. Yeah, that's that's good. Good. <laughs> You're under arrest. <laughs> Not for murder, but for loving Raven Simone music. Um, no, yeah, there's kind of, it's funny because like, sometimes you like, listen to a song and like, uh, it, like you don't know why, but you're like, this is like striking a chord. Like, this is like it's hitting yeah. like, the right notes in my body right mm-hmm. now. Yeah. What do you like to do when you're not uh, listening to music or playing music or thinking about music or writing music? Uh, I like to smoke weed and and read read fiction novels and uh, watch TV. Um, what fiction are you reading now? Currently, I'm reading this book called Intensity by Dean Koontz. Ooh, okay, are you a Dean Koontz guy? Uh, this is my second Dean Koontz novel. Mm-hmm. I read I read this book called The Taking before okay. this, which was a it's a pretty good one. It was cool. like a, a an apocalyptic novel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm very into thriller, thriller novels. Yeah. You know, I like to be scared. Yeah, yeah. Do you... Because jazz is just too calm. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. <laughs> Do you get more scared from, like, reading a really good scary book or watching, like, a really good scary movie or scary TV show? That's a good question. I think I think a, 
a scary movie or a TV show. Yeah, what scares you? What kind of, what kind of movies or TV shows scared you in the past? Uh, murderer. Murderer. So, you, you ever see Smile? You ever see the... No, no I haven't, Smile. still haven't seen that. Only the Is it really good? It's good. <laughs> good. Yeah. Is it really good horror? Yeah. That's good to know. Because I feel like we've seen recent horrors, Brendan and I, we just were not satisfied. They were not scary yeah. enough. But they did a lot of marketing for Smile or those people creepy actors whoever were hired in those the what was it the in baseball the games baseball games yeah yeah and then they were just standing in the audience and you see them <laughs> they do that mm-hmm. oh, that's yep so they were there yeah for doing um for oh promoting yeah that film. i remember that wow yeah, yeah. um right. but that's good to know okay put yeah, it on my list it's a good movie. yeah got some good jump scares um is it a twist like was it unexpected you didn't see where it was going was it a twist? No, no, it wasn't really a twist. It was kind of just like this, this psychological thing throughout where, where like, you know. Do you get spooked easily? Uh, kind of, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but, but no, this, this was like, trust me, guys. Okay. Trust me. Okay, all right, all right, So okay. definitely, definitely scary for me, but I'm not, I'm not, I don't know about Brendan. Yeah, I get scared easy. I love getting scared. I, I love the feeling of it, but like. It's like, I'm trying to think the last thing I'm really, like, the Blair Witch Project is always the thing that's definitely scared me the most, because mm-hmm. I genuinely thought that was real when I watched that for the first time, and then, like, many years afterwards, until I found out that the, all the people in, in it were, like, had, like, Law and Order credits. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, no, it's like, Santa Claus and Pro Wrestling all over again! But yeah, no. Uh, we got a spoiler alert for people. Oh my god. I know. Well, <laughs> children out there smoking weed listening to us. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to meet that kid who's listening to this podcast. Come on, man. <laughs> my Irish Santa Claus is actually not real shit. Um, uh, yeah. You're telling me there's no difference between Indica and Sativa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do watch a lot of horror, though. It's all just from yeah. the same back. <laughs> there are some good stuff that comes out now. Because like, sometimes it's, it's like, if it's scary, then it's great. Like, um, like The Descent, that one was like pretty good. That was like pretty scary. Um, I thought Conjuring 2 was really scary, actually. Yeah, I thought yeah. Conjuring was, yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah. There is isn't one that was... We saw the trailer recently in AMC. I don't remember what it was no, called. No, that's the Cole Kidman walking out. <laughs> <laughs> Very scary. Oh my God, that fancy. Yeah. Um, no, there was a, a movie where... Yeah, I just... like The trailer... I don't watch trailers, you guys. It gives everything away. Um, I just refuse to watch trailers anymore. Unless I'm in AMC and I like have to. But I try to script the previews. Anyway, TMI. So... It was just like the the characters are like they just they wouldn't leave like clearly like their mom was effed up and like she's possessed and obviously she's going through shit so it's just like don't just like go just leave but in the trailer they like kept coming back and then the mom did this crazy thing and then this thing whatever but then it was just gruesome yeah. that's the stuff where I'm just like Ugh! like it does turn me off or I I can't watch it and it's very it was very bloody and it's very like when their body twists all over the place and then when they talk weird and then like their teeth all of a sudden becomes rotten and bad and it's like, <laughs> they had such good teeth now all of a sudden it's terrible <laughs> yeah I think about that shit it's a I, dentist nightmare if I, if I think I'm having a bad day I'm like that person's having a way worse thing oh, than yeah. I mean, you know, so. oh yeah oh yeah yeah what's the thing in like horror movies that like you like you know, it turns you off on them, or you're just like not like you're like like it ruins a horror movie for you. Like like any like the cliches, or maybe like, like too much violence, or something like that. Um, I think bad acting and <laughs> and yeah. bad sex scenes. Yeah, uh, and horror movies got a lot of both of those yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What are uh, your go to shows of all time? Go to shows of all oh. time. Um, the th- let's see, the four that I've watched more more than twice that I've like binge watched through more than twice Breaking Bad Sopranos mm. The Wire Boardwalk Empire mm. wow the, Holy the, the basic uh, ones. question okay <laughs> Boardwalk Empire is on our right you haven't seen it Brendan that's seen, next on our list yeah we watched yeah. Sopranos yeah. together <clears throat> oh my god actually last year was it more than last year yeah, it feels so long ago this is a New Jersey we, podcast Sopranos yeah. we had never you should watch it uh, seen before. Boardwalk Empire as well yeah. yeah, I know for sure. New yes, Jersey. Steve Buscemi. Yeah, yeah, wow. Buscemi. Wow, a lot of uh, mob shows. Hmm? Yeah, in the mob. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah, he just, podcast. But he just laughed. He didn't answer. So yeah, now yeah. we don't know. Right, right. I mean, 
playing music for a mob boss would probably be fun. They probably would uh, probably like some good music. Have you played in an Italian restaurant, like your jazz, and then there's like some big guys coming through with rings? Oh, Not yet. No. That's, that's on my list, though. Oh, yeah. 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 And I've been, I've been looking up, you know, different Italian restaurants. To, to kind of you know <laughs> yeah, to infiltrate yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh how do you find your spots uh i look up live music and then uh, the name of a town and then i go on their <laughs> website and i find an email <laughs> and I send hundreds of emails and, and receive like five responses yeah and that's that's my that's benefit. better than none yeah Yep. Yeah, at least at least a lot of output and some input. Yeah, 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 sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's a part of it, right? It's like you get to like be like persistent, right? Like, like does that ever get hard, or like do you ever like come up like 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 come up against a wall in, in like that regard of it, of like just like being a musician or trying to like succeed in the business? Um, I mean, it is kind of soul crushing to send so many emails and then just be staring at a computer screen mm. for for a while, and then the the worst though is when people are just like. They they give very quick responses and, mm. and they're like no we're gonna pass we're gonna we're gonna pass this time yeah for, for some reason that just makes me like it makes me want to cry no yeah it's better to just not respond to yeah no. don't, don't don't maybe say you gotta no change to your me. pitch maybe you gotta change your initial email maybe yeah I don't know what you're putting in there maybe I should put at the end if you don't want us to play don't respond <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That hurts my feelings <laughs> yeah, I, I mean we're, that is the thing though we're all artists and it's that all the non-creative stuff we have to do mm -hmm. the what we call like business side of it or aspect is the boring shit mm -hmm. that nobody wants to do it's the stuff where you're like oh it requires so much energy it mm -hmm. does it, you spend so much of your time um and then you ha you're like oh but i need time to do the actual creative thing yeah you know it's but that's you know what it well you guys do have a very good instagram thank you Mm. I mean, you Thank do put up like videos regularly. Too. Also, we need a sticker. I had no idea you guys had stickers. Wait, oh, where saw, can people find we saw your Linda wait. recently? Yeah, and also, where can people find your uh, band on Instagram? Just oh yeah, plug you know, it. We'll plug it now before we get deeper into the episode. So our tag is Fat Boys Brass. F A T B O I S Brass. Mm. And do you have any shows coming up? Or yeah, we got two shows in April. Uh, April 14th at Casa del Sol in Nyack, New York. Ooh. Hope it's the right date. And then uh, April 22nd at Yonkers Brewing Company mm. in Yonkers, New York. Hell yeah. yeah. I hope those are the right dates. So, yeah. beer. You like beer. Yes. What kind of beer do you like? Uh, lately, lately I've, been, I've been sticking to the, to the lighter stuff. You know, I like a good uh, Peroni. Like a nice oh, Peroni. I don't speak beer. I don't know what that is. It's like a, it's like just an like Italian, a shitty Italian beer. Oh, okay. It's like, it's like an Italian Budweiser. Yeah. yeah. Well, whoever made that is now insulted. <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing? Or they're happy because they're getting good also, the promo. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, there is an art to good shitty beer because there's shitty beer that is not good, and then there's shitty beer that is really good, or mm -hmm. at least good. What did you drink a lot in college? Uh, the, the shittiest beer possible. <laughs> the yeah, cheapest. Yeah, there was at, at the local liquor store by my college. There was uh, you get a thirty six pack of Boxer Canadian beer, which is just just the worst, the worst possible thing to drink. <laughs> I think it was like fifteen bucks, fourteen bucks yeah. for, for thirty six beers, and uh, yeah. And I also I drank a lot of liquor in college too. I, okay, yeah. what what liquor? Do Gin. You oh, mm, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, sophisticated man. I was gonna Rock say, we need to smoke a cigar yeah. by a fireplace. Yeah, yeah. right, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right now, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It's some Pontiac. Yeah, I built a fireplace over there. <laughs> <laughs> you also have the beard for it. Yeah. How long have you been growing this beard? Um, I mean, I, I feel like it gets bigger every time you see <laughs> the it. The hair works for you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's bigger. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I actually was gonna trim it before this, but but then I you know I didn't want the itch of, of like you know. I was gonna yeah. ask: Is there um like a point where in the growth process where it's like really irritating to your skin, and then when it gets to a certain length, it's manageable or tolerable, or is it always just a pain? Uh, it's it's it honestly isn't that irritating or itchy if you just like wash it with with beard wash mm -hmm. and and condition it with beard conditioner. The only annoying thing is like. 
it getting inside of your mouth while you eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then and then like when it when it gets kind of like puffy like this, I I don't like looking at myself in the mirror. You mm-hmm. know. It's, mm-hmm. I, and then Have you ever time. like when you eat or drink like leave stuff in there you didn't realize oh, yeah. it was in there? Yeah, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. On yeah. purpose ever? Or? Also, it's very yeah. red. Yeah. It's like yeah. a reddish yeah. orange. Yeah. I've what is your uh, background. background? Well, my dad is from Italy, and uh, my mom is Puerto Rican. And uh, I didn't know it. Yeah, I somehow have a red beard. <laughs> yeah, you would not at all. <laughs> the red beard now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my my dad gets a red beard, but uh, yeah, both of his parents are are Italian. I t- I took like a twenty three in me. What'd yeah. you find? Italian, yeah. Spanish. That's it. Damn, I knew that already. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta pay more for the advanced package. Right, right, right. <laughs> Silk, 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 silk. <laughs> you gotta go on the yeah, celebrity show where they bring people and they're like, oh, we found your great, 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 great was a fisherman and came on this boat and uh, had two shillings in his pocket. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Like the... yeah. Have you been to either country before? Uh, I've been to Italy and I've been to Puerto Rico. I've never been to Spain. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. I think my, my Spanish ancestors are from the Canary Islands. Okay, cool. Hmm. I, I, don't, I don't really know what goes on there. Yeah. I like the name though. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you think there are canaries there? I think they got the canaries there, right? Yeah. Why? Why would they call it the Canary Islands if there were no canaries? Right. Unless I, they're trying to lure canaries there. Canary, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yo, you guys go to Canary Island? And they're like, oh, fucking canaries here! <laughs> I'm trapped in a money pit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what what what'd you think of, um, of both of those uh, places that when you traveled there? They're great. You know, I, I have a lot of family in, in Italy. So oh. almost every time I've been to Italy, it's been just a family event, you know, stay, staying at my dad's childhood home. And Where the, in mm, Italy? Cool. It's uh, uh, Avellino. It's uh, like a couple hours, in, I think, inland of, of Naples. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah same same. Area of Italy where they went in the Sopranos. Oh, yeah, cool. same, same city. Cool. So I, I always, when people ask me that question, I feel like they're gonna think I'm like kind of lying or something. You know, I feel like they're gonna know about the Sopranos and mm-hmm. they're gonna be like, this guy is not really Italian. Look at look at his red beard, and, yeah. and he gives me the name of the city from the Sopranos. Are, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, you do look Irish Scottish. Yeah, I've, I've been told that. Yeah, well, you go undercover. It's not our fault. You look like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're right, Renee. It's not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Uh, yeah. Well, what? I mean, Jordan, you also have a little red in your beard, and you're half Italian. Maybe it is True. a red beard. It's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. yeah. Gotta get rid of the stigma that only the Irish are redheads, okay? There's plenty of other kinds you, of redheads. You, Brendan, is Irish. No red. And none. Oh, wow. None. Look, Wait, what's the other? Italian. I know, yeah. yeah also- <laughs> 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 this makes more sense. <laughs> wow. What is your other side of your family? Are you um, half my, Irish? Yeah, my, my dad is 100% Irish, and then my mom is like a mix of like Romanian and oh, Polish right. and like Russian, I think. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Interesting. What about you? 100% Iranian. Oh, nice. Yes. Wow. Yeah, first generation. Hell yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, I'm just uh, better than all of you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have an actual immigrant story. Yeah. <laughs> you guys have to go like far back between who's settled here. So, right? <laughs> <laughs> first gener- I just wanted to. Show that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, my, my, my dad's an immigrant. They just said that. Your dad, ca- you said, came from Italy? Yeah. His child. Okay. Home. All right. Yeah. Well, my mom is not first generation. So it's half first, half second, so half the math, half. that. Mm-hmm. So all right, fractions. okay, all right. Yeah, fractions, yeah. yeah so that's two against them. Yeah. Oh, is it like <laughs> 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 sure dodgeball or something? First generation immigrants. First time Europeans. <laughs> Sorry, you had a question. <laughs> no, I was just going to ask you, uh, what are some foods that you can't live without? Ooh. Foods that I can't live without? Um... Damn, dude. Uh, I, I eat bananas every week. Mm. I, I, I could not Good go. source of potassium. Yeah. 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 Mm. I actually, I haven't had them in a, in a while. And I woke up with a really bad toe cramp mm. today. Mm. Mm. And, I, and I think that's 
you know, part of the reason. Oh, you're lacking. I did have a banana yeah. today. Oh my I feel God. really good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we toes. should send you home with a banana. Yeah, we have a banana. We'll send you home with a banana. Please, yeah. Please, yeah. We don't want you to get those cramps. Yeah. 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 If I get a cramp while wow. driving, it, it could be dead. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Man died. <laughs> I got the toe cramps. You guys could have saved me. <laughs> you get a banana in hand. He's like trying to get it in, but then <laughs> toe cramp hits. I should have opened it before I started driving. <laughs> Why did he peel after he pressed on the gas? Oh, oh God. Yeah. Now, are you like a, like a straight up banana eater or do you like put banana in things? No, no, I eat it straight up. Yeah. Straight up. I, I like it when it's like uh, kind of browning too. Mm. I don't like a, like a green oh. banana. Mm. They, they, <laughs> yeah, they no, don't that's taste sweet. like anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Also, sweet. perfect yeah. for, you don't have to wash your hands if you eat a banana. Yeah. You think about it. You just touch. You did crap. They go right to eating a banana. No, and, you you'll never, and you'll never touch the banana. You can just use the peel. Yeah. You just you drop the peel. I do that. Right? Like yes. there is no, a You don't great... have to wash your hands and eat potato salad. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things you Whatever, Jordy. <laughs> this podcast is brought to you by not washing your hands. It's so great. <laughs> <laughs> like a, you can't do like a clementine. You gotta sure, like separate yeah. the peel. You can't. I mean, I guess yeah. you could like yeah. do the peel, but it's not as like convenient as a banana. Yeah, it's got like a cone, like an ice cream cone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yo, a food specifically like a fruit that is like built to like be inconveniently already has like a little bit of an advantage in terms of being good because like. I didn't like oranges for a long time because I'm like I'm like such a chore to like peel it all off and come up in pieces and you're like yeah, a little bit of the white stuff, a little bit of the white stuff on there. So banana peel stays intact. Yeah. Also, when you hold a banana, it's like a handle. It's like your whole. It's it so easy to hold yeah. and just to well also oranges. Rita's really making some very suggestive uh, hand motions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like how you um you said fruit though. Yeah. You, it's a healthy snack. It's important. That's important. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What else? Mm. Is it mostly whole fruit and vegetables? <laughs> <laughs> I like eating eggplant. No, definitely <laughs> pasta. Pasta is a big, big part of my diet. Mm-hmm. Pasta so can't, good. Can't live without a true it. Italian. What is the pasta of choice if you're having your last uh, mm. meal? <gasps> so so many you different stole, kinds of You pastas. stole the golden trumpet. So are you are you talking about like the the sauce and everything? Or are you talking about just the the shape? Just the all, noodle. All, yeah. Oh, all of it. Oh, okay. J- just the noodle. <laughs> <laughs> just the noodle. No, 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 I, I, I don't know. If there's protein in there. I don't know what kind of cheese you're using. <laughs> okay, yeah. Answer mine. Then answer theirs. All right, just the noodle. Ladies <laughs> <laughs> first. This this might be weird, but there's uh there's like tennis racket shaped noodles. Have you guys ever Fuck had those? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What? Wait, is it like with like the handle and everything? Get the fuck yeah, out. They're, they're like they're like you know that big. They're they're tiny little tennis. Wow. Racket. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was like a, a staple in my childhood. Yeah. Just because my my family we all played tennis. Okay. And then, and then my mom brought home these really cute tennis racket shapes and yeah. and and now now I can't get enough. What's it called? Do you know the name of it? Raquette. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yep, yeah, there it is. I'm going to say it with your hands. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Wow. Okay, so now sauce. Wow, that's, that's awesome. And, and sauce, I, I like a, a homemade pesto. Like a, like a, like a mm. vegan pesto. I don't, I don't like when they put you know, Parmesan in the pesto. Right. I like to add it later. Mm-hmm. But like that with it with a tennis racket pasta. Whoa. Yeah, the tennis what racket. A combination. The, the basil oh, gets inside the little, uh, the little oh, strings. The little, the little oh, gaps, so it's, it's nice. It's a good vessel for, mm. for pesto. That's so true. Like kind of like waffle pasta. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Waffle pasta. <laughs> 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 Clapping away. You got some ideas, Jordan? Yeah, no, everything's just You know what? You shouldn't even be one to talk. You're half Italian and you don't even like pasta. Okay, we don't have to Whoa. <laughs> talk about this. <laughs> uh, what, no, what? My, uh, my belly just doesn't like carbs as uh, much. Yeah. yeah it doesn't like eating know. pasta sometimes. But, yeah. but if, if it's not what I He's a full on rice person. Well, that, that's. He yeah. loves rice. It's not bad. Right. No, it's I like great. mac and cheese. I eat lasagna. Like, I eat spaghetti. Yeah. But that will not be his choice mm-hmm. his go-to that's yeah pasta is the last food. thing in the world yeah. that i want to eat wow. yeah. yeah do you yeah. cook jordan or yeah what do you yeah. what do you cook uh i like to cook like uh pasta like, <laughs> pasta <laughs> <laughs> tennis ragged pasta yeah. <laughs> 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 um i like pasta um, lately, uh, I've been cooking a lot of like 
slow cook meats. Right, getting a lot of chuck roast, or like, like a pork shoulder, okay. throwing it in there, in there with some some uh, some peppers and stuff, and and making like tacos. Ooh, nice. That's, yeah, cool. That's it's very rewarding to, to cook that. What's on the tacos? What's what's on the tacos? Yeah, what else do you put on? Uh, the meat or no, no, no. I, I like to dice up some onions, a little cilantro. If, oh, I, if I find a good avocado at the grocery oh, store yeah. that's already ripe, then yeah. I'll, I'll go mm-hmm. for that. Uh, maybe some hot sauce. Nice. What's, yeah. what's your hot sauce brand? Lately, it's been Frank's Red Hot. Mm, yes. Yeah. A Texas man. <laughs> is, is, that, is that from Texas? I think so. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like grocery <laughs> store. Is, is it Tex- <laughs> Texas Pete, the, the, the Texas one? True. It is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. It's just not Louisiana and it's not Mexico. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Cincinnati. Oh. oh there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cincinnati hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> of all the places that you've traveled to, what place had the best food? Whew. Um probably Italy. Yeah. Italy, yeah. 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 Hey Dad, but what what was the best dish? Was it pasta? Of course, man. Yeah. Come on, come yeah. on. How was, how was the pizza? Did you have any of the pizza while you were there? Yeah, yeah. I've heard, I've heard like mixed takes on pizza in Italy. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, there, there's, there's like a, you know, different styles there. There's obviously the, the, the Neapolitan pizza, which is just like the personal pizza that they give you, and and they and they don't cut it up, and you got to cut it up yourself, and you mm-hmm. eat it with a fork and knife, and what? And then, you know, you know, like a, like a. <laughs> you gotta eat it with a fork and knife. Well, you know, you you can you can cut your own slices and eat it with your your hands. Okay. If, if, if you want mm. but but you know you, it's it's more convenient to kind of cut out a little piece and mm. you know fork mm. it in work. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but they but they also you, you can also get that kind of like family style new york thing and and you know the, the bigger kind of shit and mm. it's all been really good when mm. i've had it you know the 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 cheese is always really fresh mm. the sauce is always made the way it should be mm, which right. is how, how, how should it be made uh you, you know you put the garlic in there mm-hmm. you, you never put any sugar in there mm. right I, I i've been to pizza places in, in the states where the, the sauce is just so sweet yeah you know yeah. I, I hate that it's so disappointing and, mm-hmm. and you, you know, know like ketchup sauce no. <laughs> just catch up in a cheese stick. <laughs> Once again, we end the podcast with food. I know. We have food. That's, that's how we know what we're, we're, we're really cooking. Yeah. yeah. Are you a topping guy about uh, for pizza, or are you? Yeah. Yeah. What's, yeah, what's the toppings? What, 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 which ones? Uh, I like some mushrooms on there. I like yeah. some onions on there. Mm-hmm. If we're going for meat, I'd go with sausage. Mm. Oh. Um, you know, I, I I was going spicy stuff for a while. I as as of late, I have a I have acid reflux disease, mm-hmm. right? So I can't I can't go all in with the spicy stuff. But mm. yeah, you know, put like a nice spicy pepper on there. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, you just made some references. Uh, do you dabble in mushrooms or acid? Yes. What have your experiences been like? Do you enjoy them? Well, uh, psychedelics. When I when I first started doing psychedelics, I was for my first trip. I was like sixteen years old, right? And it was like oh, a wow. good time. And then the se- and then the second and third time, I got sold like research chemicals, mm-hmm. and I had a horrible time. Mm-hmm. And like I took I took uh, these like research chemicals, whatever the hell it was, and then I hung out with my friends all day, and I was like having a good trip until my friends pulled out a bomb. Right, and they were all like smoking this bong, and they pass it to me. And when I when I got the bong, they held like three lighters up to it, <gasps> and I took I took oh, a hit. Yeah, you I, took a hit on acid. Well, yeah, while I was on acid, acid. Yeah. So bong rip on acid. <laughs> well, okay, acid, uh huh. And then and then uh, and then I was like, why did you guys all put your lighters up to this? And like, <laughs> that was salvia extract oh. and not weed. And I literally like I. I thought I had died. Like I just, I, I ceased to exist as a person anymore. I was just like shapes in, oh. in like a, just like a blank universe. You just did a Pixar kept, film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I, I just kept like morphing into different shapes and just like every new shape I would take was like a new life that I had already lived. And like my past lives were a dream. Oh and my God. I, yeah. I was like stuck in this world. And oh. uh, finally I came back and, and I was like, sh- I was like screaming, like I remember, I remember <laughs> to remember my original identity. <laughs> oh my god! Jump it, jump it, jump it, jump it! Oh my god! I feel like I'd love to watch that, but I certainly do want to not want to.
of you yeah, guys. Yeah, that. Was, I'm terrible. so sorry yeah. you had to go through that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like it was like pretty traumatizing. I was like uh, yeah. 16 years old, and and then I, I you hadn't touched to... psychedelics for a while, and uh, mm. and then after college, I got kind of more into them, and and now you know I can take acid. And you really microdose good time. shrooms or anything? Or no, I never really microdose. I'm I don't, I don't really do shrooms too much. When I take shrooms, I I like lose control of my thoughts, and I don't. I'm not. I'm not. Mm. I'm not a fan of that. I like to take acid ah. and kind of just like be introspective, but control where my thoughts are going. You know, if I take shrooms, it's just like every, everything's coming out at once. Anything I could possibly think of. I feel like is, I'm the opposite. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. Acid, calm. I feel like I have no control. Mm. And shrooms, I'm mm. like, okay, this is, you know, it, yeah, I don't wow. know. It was, it's more manageable. Mm. Yeah. It was always, but of course, like when, I mean, on shrooms, unless <laughs> I'm around shrooms, Jordan, it was, it was like you were in Wonkaville. Mm-hmm. Like you were for mm-hmm. sure, like things were, there was like, um, what was it? I think it was like a um, uh, drawing of a, like a giant bat on the side of a building. It was graffiti. Mm-hmm. And then we knew once it started, We I remember before we took it, we passed that. And I'm like, oh, wow, look at that bat on the side of the building. Then we took it. We were like walking back. We were doing this trail or whatever. And then I saw it. And then it was moving side to side. And like, and I'm like, oh, fuck, here it goes. Here it goes. And then, yeah, Jordan was an entire world of his own um did get I, the happy flower people for a little ooh. bit but then they turned very dark yeah it was he a very, had a dark uh, time yeah, yeah it was a very rainy day and we also, were by a Lowe's and I was at my Lowe's yeah it was not <laughs> oh boy I feel like I had to yeah babysit while being on it and having my own experience um mm. which is not fun um but it was I mean now I just totally look back and laugh at it but I certainly yeah I was just like I'm done okay I don't want to do that and then right. I want to do it blah 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 it was just not pleasant during at the time but then we met a, uh, an old dude who clearly has you know experienced that in the past um, named Steve so that was an adventure also yeah, um, Steve. <laughs> you just the weird people you meet along the way um <laughs> Yeah, it was just like, I feel like Jordan was kind of like running out of hell. Like he was trying, I turn around and he just bolted. He, I'm like, where the fuck are you going? And it's like, uh, yeah, that, so that was, part of me was like laughing inside hysterically because I was like, this is so funny. I wish I wasn't on shrooms because I would enjoy this so much more. But I would, yeah, get sidetracked and then like this thing was happening and then I was just like, oh, and then you couldn't like, it didn't even feel in the park, it didn't. Like it just look completely different, mm. right? Like it does on streams. You it you it doesn't even look like you're walking a straight path, and everything's just bouncy and in yeah. like rainbow, like it you know. Um, and of course, I'm such an idiot because I was just like, oh yeah, let's get <laughs> like an Uber. And we'll go back to like the Airbnb. You can't freaking use your phone. No way. <laughs> With how much we... Oh my, we were stupid. We just ate the caps. We didn't even like it. Like it, and it fucking tasted terrible, of course. Um, But yeah, like looking at my phone and I was just like... <laughs> there's like a whole... Anything, anything like starts a train of thought elsewhere. But I fe- felt in control. Like, oh yeah, these are my thoughts. Like I understand. So I didn't barrel down so many layers like Jordan. But for me, I was just like phones are stupid why did they invent them like the blah 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 and then you yeah you just go off thinking something else and then i turn around and i'm like fuck where'd you already go <laughs> so, did you guys did you guys take a large dose <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely yeah. took a lot more than i should have. yes oh sure. <laughs> we definitely did not like sure. measure them as well as we should have measured them Mm. Kind of a thing. Yeah, it was yeah. just like yes, we were just like why not? Yeah. Like we took like very yeah. measured doses in the past before as chocolate yeah. cups. Also, and we were just like, oh, we could each take half. So as long as we don't take more than half of the bag, then mm. it's fine so because that's like yeah. uh, whatever it was, like seven grams or whatever. So half of that each was like. But the the like happy thought. Yeah, it is. yeah, that's a, that's a pretty high dose. Yeah, yeah. no, it's for sure high. <laughs> the yeah. the happy thought while on shrooms. Um, cause I was still connected to the real world and <laughs> Jordan was gone, but, but I was just like, oh, this is not going to last long. Mm. I was like, oh, cause we, you know, we've already done acid before we met each other and then also with each other. And you know, that's a whole, whole day affair. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, oh, that was like a huge relief. I was like, thank God, this is not going to be 12 fucking hours. Yeah. I was like, great. As soon as we got to the Airbnb, started coming off down. It was done. Um, the thing I like the least is. I mean, any of these Molly acid or shrooms and you, 
shrooms is just weird when you're trying to like eat or drink and I want something but my body rejects it, does not want it. I feel like I would try to eat stuff and I'm just like, oh, this is terrible. Or it's like, it's so, and it was just like, probably just like crackers. Yeah. I think it's just like, ca- and it was just like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> you like, go right all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding the screwdriver. <laughs> wearing a diaper. Yeah. Bill Pickle, Bill Pickle. Um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> It's just the, the stuff I don't like is that, like, I mean, you know, different from weed. I love eating when I have the munchies, mm. um, but you can't, like, everything tastes terrible mm. on that kind of stuff, so, yeah. yeah. But still happy we did it. <laughs> I just, I, I personally don't like doing repetitive things when I'm on shrooms and, like, chewing. Chewing. Just mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, like, uh, hearing, yes. hearing the sounds of me oh, chewing yes. in my head. What do you like doing though? Um, I like I like going I like going to concerts. Mm. I was gonna ask. Yeah, yeah how's listening to music on? Uh, yeah, I like I like going to a, like a music festival and, yep. and taking psychedelics. Same. Yeah. 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 I like uh, my my friends and I had have some experiences where we just kind of just sat in my friend's apartment with all the lights off and, and took acid and and painted painted the like his fridge and uh with no lights on how'd you see it it was glowing dark paint whoa oh, yeah, that's cool. awesome yeah that, that's always fun but i feel like i don't know what are those white in... fridges no no it was uh it was, I was like a, that's a perfect campus. it was like a mini fridge it was oh, cool. yeah like, like a tiny little thing yeah that, that was fun but Neat. being staying inside is kind of kind of freaks me out sometimes mm. i'm on psychedelics you know being inside is, is common you just need a change of scenery. I think yeah. if you sit anywhere for too long mm-hmm. and then pattern shift and stuff had or whatever and like whatever you're focusing, you're just you realize you're like, oh okay, I got I gotta move. Mm-hmm. I have to just like re- like locate or go somewhere else or do whatever. I mean, when we did it here, it's also gorgeous. When it was outside in Brotherford, we took a walk throughout town. Yeah. It was a gorgeous day. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and it's just yeah, it's also different when you are like at your home base versus when you're somewhere and you're. You know, you're not near your home whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but also the the thing with festivals is you you know you know everybody else is on something, yeah. so you're just like, oh cool cool yeah we, we're you right. know, all in this doing whatever. Like the longest time Jordan and I were just sitting on this giant uh, grass couch chair, like entirely made of grass, like a super <laughs> huge whatever. We were just sitting on it and we clearly zoned out, like we were tripping and whatever. Because then I realized that there were a group of probably like 19 year olds standing and like w- watching us and like waiting to be like oh can, can we take a picture here can you guys move and we're like oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 sorry sorry yeah. so then you're like oh fuck how long are we sitting there and we're like waiting to take a picture <laughs> because if you just sit somewhere and also looks like you're just watching a real life movie like mm. everyone's just moving and going and doing whatever um and then i just remember one time i was waiting online to go to the bathroom and last thing I'll say, and there's clearly a, <laughs> and Jordan was so sweet. There was like a lady working there who clearly was like, like I'm tripping and I'm just trying to use the porta potty. And she was just like, did you just get out of line? Or did you just cheat? Did you just cut in here? Whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, I can't deal with this right now. I was like, what? What are you doing? <laughs> and then there were other girls standing there be like, no, she was like here the whole time. Don't worry about whatever. And like some people who work at festivals where you're like, oh yeah, they clearly do not know how to deal with people who are on drugs. Mm-hmm. Maybe you shouldn't be working at a festival. Maybe you should be like dudes. <laughs> like honestly, because you know, like there's some dudes who work at festivals and they're so chill they're so cool they like look at you know immediately you're on something and they're like hey don't forget to hydrate drink some of that water and do whatever and they're like light jovial and everything but this lady was like dark like a dark cloud and then i come out of the porta potty and i'm like talking to jordan and i'm just like yeah this thing happened whatever and jordan's like yeah, don't worry about that she's in a different universe. <laughs> and she, she's like you're not in the same place as her yeah let's move over here um yeah also navigating around energy in festivals because i feel like multiple times jordan and i were at a, like a music festival where we saw other couples like fighting or breaking up around us mm-hmm. and you're like oh fuck. and you're like you know moving 
Because that is the thing. I feel like some people do. What a place to break up with someone. But it's because (laughs) usually they're on drugs and they're on something and they're on a negative thought loop Mm. and they're not letting it go and they don't have someone around them to detach it from that and then they just get (laughs) stuck. And then you end up... I've seen that before at an EDM concert, just a Terminal 5. And this girl, this guy was cheating, accusing girl of uh, like cheating. They started crying, whatever. They were on acid. And I was just like, oh, but I don't know if there's any factual stuff from it. It's none of my business. And I don't care. But it was like, to me, I was just like, oh, a time when like it would have been like happy and you like would have been good and you enjoyed yourself. And it, you'll leave this night remembering it as a shitty time. Mm. So that was like the downside where I'm like, oh, yeah, well, you gotta, you gotta be careful. Yeah. Yeah. It's my PSA. You gotta be careful. Drink a lot of water. We're at music <laughs> festivals and doing drugs. <laughs> well, we appreciate you coming by, yeah. Jordan, oh, yeah. and uh, chilling with us. Thanks for having me. This is fun. Also, if uh, Jordan wants some uh, mozzarella and Italian food, uh, we have an <laughs> LNH Studios uh, comedy wow. show at uh, Annabella's House of Mozzarella, March uh, 25th, this Saturday, and you can get tickets to that at lnhstudios.com slash shows. Uh, we have Dana Marie coming down. Uh, she was on the podcast as well. Chris Park in North Jersey favorite and uh matt rivera also a very funny jersey comic who's uh performing all over and in the city as well that's Tim a Ketchum. stand-up stand-up show sorry yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Stand-up, stand-up show up. and they also have a lounge singer and okay. some uh oh also true some some uh live band action as well they do. Uh, during the show yeah there's a trumpet player who's a pretty hip, hip old older gentleman <laughs> he's definitely him. <laughs> Yo, he, has, he has a lot of stories of like playing in like northern california in like the 60s and 70s yeah. <laughs> just like touring around so and catch yeah. us this weekend uh if you're in asbury oh, Park, wow. garden yeah. state uh festival it's film festival up. our short film 100 words will be premiering the 26th mm-hmm. um i believe at three o'clock at 2 30 at asbury yeah. lanes yeah. and asbury so Park. that'll be fun yeah. yeah and just catch uh, other films while you're there it's I'm delicious excited. food yeah we're doing like like like, co- like cocktail stuff and like red carpet walks and shit like that yeah, so it's a go. Go. It a go. so, yeah, yeah definitely say hey if you guys are around yeah. right yeah oh yeah oh yeah say hey say hello say hi say and hey. vote for them for best film that's right yeah best that's, film of the, of the film festival best <laughs> film festival of the universe <laughs> uh, uh, continue tuning into sessions with Mary Jane yeah. have a great rest of your life peace out